Mr. Chairman, I, I strongly support this amendment, uh, which is our substitute offered by the gentlelady from West Virginia. Uh, and I'm joined, uh, she's joined by uh, not only uh, Mr. Nugenbauer, but Mr. Biggert, Mr. Hensling, Mr. Garrett, and myself on offering this. And uh, taking into consideration what Mr. Sherman said, uh, uh, which I think is a valid point, uh, I, uh, this, this substitute, I think, represents the only financial industry reform proposal that's been discussed over the past year that does what members on both sides of the aisle are demanding, and that's an end to taxpayer-funded bailouts or even the possibility of such. Uh, there is nothing in either the administration proposal or the bill we're considering today that prevents regulators from bailing out large financial institutions including their creditors, counterparties, and shareholders. And in fact, you know, since that's happened, we've, we and I think the general public, our constituents, have been angered by once we've, the taxpayers have stood behind these bailouts, it, it's only resulted in a continuation of, of um, some of the uh, uh, bonuses that we've seen uh, that have um, caused great consternation. Uh, you know, we, we on this side of the aisle have watched with, uh, with I think, some interest uh, that the, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Frank, who's uh, not here right this second, but his disagreement with Secretary Geithner over whether the resolution authority established in the underlying bill should be funded by assessments on financial companies before a company is deemed systemically significant by the government. Uh, and becomes insolvent or after the fact. And I'm not sure where that, whether that's been resolved between the administration and the chairman, although I did hear the chairman say yesterday that Secretary Geithner was not a member of the committee, which leads me to believe that a decision's been made, at least by the chairman, that this will be pre-funded. But the reality is whether you pre-fund a fund, set it up and pre-funded or fund it after the fact, both, approach, both approaches continue to enshrine in law, a misguided, too big to fail doctrine that skews market in, uh, incentives and leads inevitably to taxpayer funded bailouts, or even a, a, as bad a thought, or almost as bad a thought, is requiring the competitors of these funds to bail out their competition, which is just, to me, uh, uh, flies in the face of, of, uh, of everything that, that we have been taught about. Uh, uh, fairness and um, uh, the competitive um, uh, landscape. The only effective way to eliminate the moral hazard, which continues even after the chairman's uh, um, amendment, is uh, the moral hazard created by the too big to fail policy that led to the bailouts of AIG, Fannie, Freddie, Citi, Bank of America, General Motors, Chrysler, GMAC, Citi, CIT. It, and put the taxpayers on the hook for billions of dollars of, of uh, that most of which or and some of which will never be recovered is to create a new chapter of the bankruptcy coach to resolve insolvent large non-bank financial institutions uh, in fact chairman Volker former chairman Volker uh, said why can't you do this with with some of these non-bank financial institutions uh, now mr. chairman during debate yesterday uh, you uh, mischaracterized the Republican substitute as pro-investor. Uh, you know, that's not true. No one wins in bankruptcy. Uh, bankruptcy clearly would have been much fairer to the parties involved, including the investors and the taxpayers, than the government-managed reorganization of General Motors and Chrysler. In those cases, the union, and I think we all, you know, because of political connection, the union certainly was favored over pension funds, retirement funds, 401ks, and the savings of, of many middle-class uh, Americans who had invested in General Motors. Uh, we do not think that a system where government gets to pick winners and losers based on ambiguous objectives determined by expedient political circumstances should trump a bankruptcy system that's already been proven more capable of resolving and liquidating large, complex financial institutions, and does it in the, in the light of day with, with transparency and disclosure. A Republican substitute is clearly a more serious approach than the underlying bill, 
in which the proponents can't even figure out who is going to pay and when uh, to fund a bailout authority administered for the benefit of a handful of large financial institutions, which will either be listed or not listed on a list that's either secret or does not exist. Uh, unlike the underlying bill, and if uh, someone would yield me, well, they I'm have sorry. to have I, I will, uh, have I'll be recognized before they can yield to you. But no, I, I, I ask unanimous consent to, for the gentleman to have 30 additional seconds. All right, thank you. Uh, under the underlying bill, this amendment, uh, uh, unlike the underlying bill, the uh, substitute offered by Ms. Capito. Uh, Capito is based on the principles, number one, the government must stop rewarding failure and picking winners and losers. Two, taxpayers must never again be asked to pick up the tab for bad bets on Wall Street. And three, market discipline must be restored so that financial firms no longer expect the government and the taxpayers to rescue them from the consequences of their imprudent business decisions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.